6.50 a.m. I'm out here a little bit early this morning. And right there is the ball of light coming up. Um, and that is more or less the northeast direction. And let's just go ahead and explain the movement of this ball of light. So with it being in the northeast direction, more eastward than, than north, it will slowly rise up. It will kick over to this direction here, as we have seen it in past videos, correct? And then from this point, it rises right straight up from that point, and then continues over the tree line and then down to this point here and then once it gets in this area of the western sky then it will move over beyond the building and it will set in the northwest okay so we have kind of like a U-shaped movement to that ball of light. Now, with that being said, hmm, we do not have an overcast sky this morning. And you know, what else is kind of strange? It is, oh, probably maybe about 60 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. If that. A very cool morning. Very wet out here. A lot of dew. Whereas the past few mornings, quite a few mornings, sticky, muggy, higher temperature. And overcast conditions this morning clear conditions cool nowhere near sticky out here hmm okay let's go ahead and I have not seen any cats out here this morning but I wanted to bring up a couple of other talking points here so let's go ahead and mosey our way into the trees and as you can see here we have <laughs> I think all the kittens are still curled right up okay so we'll empty dirty watering dish well good morning China <laughs> well how are we doing girl Huh? Hey, you gonna come see me? Huh? Yeah. That's my pretty little girl. Yeah. I haven't gotten to pet you in a while, huh? Yeah. Are you hungry? Okay, let's go ahead and give you some breakfast, shall we? Yeah, just regular old dry cat food, but we're getting low, so tomorrow morning might be pancakes. Now, I wanna show you something. You see this? See how the ground is all turfed up like that? Well, good morning, Puff. Good to see you. Okay, and which I'm going to kind of freak her out. And then we've got more digging right here. And, um, based. Oh. Well, I'm not, I can't see too well right now. Um, yeah, so I'm having a hard time seeing any types of tracks here. What do we have right here? What have been, what's been dug up? Hmm. An angle brace, probably to, oh, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, 
And this one here wants to eat, so I gotta spread some food out. But anyways, I'm thinking that uh, that this is probably uh, raccoons or possums that you know, I'm finding little little morsels, bits and bits of cat food out here, and turfing this up. Okay, here we go, girl. There, whoops, boy, that's quite a little bit. Well, most of it on the screen. You're okay, China. It's okay. Okay, so anyways, before I got to get busy cleaning out that watering bowl, and which, let's go ahead and speak on the factor of water. <coughs> Pardon me. And because it's nice and cool out here with a breeze, um, what, oh, I spoke too soon. They are already surrounding me. And that is the factor of mosquitoes. Yesterday morning, I brought up that dang virus. The dengue virus. Transmitted through mosquitoes, correct? Well, here in Michigan, the West Nile virus has now been detected within the mosquito population. Okay, now this is kind of infuri infuriating for me because over the last couple of years now here in Michigan, we have been introducing those hybrid mosquitoes that is supposed to be dwindling the mosquito population and thus making it that much less likely to encounter any of these viruses or diseases that are being carried by the mosquito population. So much for science, right? Or, as a conspiratorial thought, maybe these mosquitoes that were introduced into the population, if you will, were already carrying viruses or diseases manufactured you know I'm not saying this is the factor but it's always a possibility correct yeah and of course you also have to you know figure in the gender factor because it's only the female mosquitoes that actually bite and draw blood thus transmitting the diseases or viruses um, you know they keep wanting to play God and the more that mankind tries to play so-called God the more negative effects it has on the world population Because remember, as always, whenever mankind decides to create something new, something must be destroyed first. What has to be destroyed in order for AI to continue on with its sentient life? Hmm. What is it that was destroyed that had the consequences of geoengineering food products, geoengineering the skies, geoengineering medications, vaccines? Oh, you're a new one. Hi there. Eh, stop buzzing in my ear, please. Well, I have not seen this one before. And you look like a little boogie. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, a new one visiting the feeding ground. And I think I'll uh, let it come up and try to introduce itself to the others. Of course, this one is from down yonder. Come on, kitten. It's okay. Well... Just wanted to come check it out. Get a little bit further distancing from me because it is not familiar with me. But it 
has been guided down here for the feeding grounds. Oh, and we can see the sun shine coming through the canopy. But yeah, those are my topics this morning. Oh, yeah, um, and something else that just, I, I don't know. You know, one of the factors during the pandemic phase and their nonsensical uh, vaccine rollout was, if you remember, the focal point was on, at the beginning, the most vulnerable, the old people, the nursing homes. We had all the nursing homes locked down. They were mandated. They were forced into accepting the vaccines or be removed from the premise. Yeah. I'm going to go into that a little bit further because I'm still steamed up over this factor because it involves my mother, which, of course, she passed away a few months ago. Um, and I'm going to use my mother and father as an example in my reincarnation video that deep heartfelt reincarnation video that I will come out with eventually so since the pandemic they have really beefed up the efforts of vaccines and vaccinations and like I said during that pandemic it was the <clears throat> vulnerable that they focused on Lock them down. It was, uh, you know, it was no request. It was a mandate. They were forced into this against their will to accept this stuff. Oh, hey, what do we got here? Um, yeah, just now hearing him. Probably came out blurry. But anyways... So now what are they pushing on to the elderly? The RSV vaccine. If you are 75 years of age or older, you need this vaccine. Why? By God, if I was 75 years old or older, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to take any kind of, of, of medications because I'm only a step away from death's door, right? What, do people expect to live forever on this planet, this realm? We are not designed for that. In fact, if you are familiar with the good book, and if you are familiar with history, it states that we are not to cut into the body. Medical science is not for the human being. We are actually supposed to die Whenever the circumstances sees fit, we are not to try to play God on this earthly realm. Because we were not created by the same force that created this realm. Okay? It says right there in the Bible. Chapter 2. It speaks of that hybridization program. You just got to understand what the heck you are reading when you put your faith into something. And this is why I bring up the Bible so much. Now, I could use the Quran. I could use a lot of other religious texts and state the same refutes against those sources. But we are in the Western civilization. This country was built upon the <clears throat> morals of that book. Understand people, that's a medieval derived book. King James. 
Now, if you want to say, oh, well, I used uh, the new international version or whatever. Hogwash and Boulder Dash says in the Bible, you're not supposed to change the words of the Bible. And what are all these new Bibles doing? The easier reading Bibles and all that, they're changing the words. Gee, but why does that matter when we have the Mandela Effect? That's been affecting the King James Bible right along. And that is the Bible that is used as a reference for those newer Bibles. Well, let's go ahead and go into the field of politics. We have this campaign debate coming up tonight. And who's talking about it? Of course, mainstream media. And who are they going out and interviewing? Kids. College kids. What's the issue for that? Or over that? Well, so, why are you watching the debate tonight? Well, because I want to make a well-informed decision when it's time. <laughs> Well, how are you supposed to make a well-deformed decision if you don't know the background of the people that you are voting for? And these kids are too bloody young to control the outcomes of supposedly important issues such as the next leader. But then, whenever there's protests, where do they originate? Colleges, universities, so on and so forth. You know, back during the Vietnam War, it was government agents, undercover agents that would go into colleges and universities just to rile these kids up in order to bring about radical times. Prepare yourselves to see that once again in the near future. We've already seen it with these idiot kids on the campuses protesting over Palestine or Israel. And once again, if you are that adamant about wars that's kicking off in another country, go to that country and protest over there and not here where nothing is really mattering over the stupidity of thousands of years old battles, conflicts, and wars. It's ridiculous. It is stupidity. And we let these younger generations throughout year after year after year basically controlling the outcomes of a lot of things. Who's at the main front of the abortion issue? Kids. Kids that just learned about the concepts of life. <laughs> yeah. They've got these kids so programmed today, today. It is ridiculous. And they've been doing it for years and years and years. Wake up, people. Smell your coffee. And that is the topics for this Thursday. Not sure whether I'll be coming out with any more content today. I'm going to try to cut back on what I pump out. I got a lot, a lot of content out there. Still having YouTube playing their games, as well as Google. And of course, I've got other uh, agencies, departments, so on and so forth, that they have to put in their little two cents worth with their little flyovers that they do with me. Yeah. I've gained a lot of attention, even though I've got, you know, a low amount of subscribers. It doesn't matter. 
because I got people out there that's watching my channel and they don't like a lot of the content that I put out and they let me know while they're up there in the sky <laughs> we'll see you later China okay so on that note I'm headed in I'm actually getting some goosebumps out here <laughs> and the winds picked up got a nice breeze coming through my apartment nice not having to listen to the sounds of the AC breathing in stagnant but cool air <laughs> probably be out here doing a little bit more berry picking I don't know we got cats way down yonder probably waiting for me to head inside so they can wander down this way anyway people there's my observations for this morning as well as my little bit of two cents worth or 27 cents worth because of inflation today thank you mr. Joe Biden uh, thank you to the Obama administration. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> I, I really don't want to watch this stupid exhibition match tonight. It's going to be redonkulous. But I'm kind of curious. And I really don't want to add to the views to mainstream media no nope. but I might I might plug in for a moment or two really doesn't concern me anymore I care less about politics what the government does what the military does what law enforcement does what the health system does all utter nonsense today and if you're falling for it I feel very sorry for you. On that note, have yourselves a great one. And we'll see you once again on this flip side. Take care. Take care of one another.